shifting gears into the entire situation with the Navy SEALs going down over the weekend. 30-plus uh, dead on board, 20-plus SEAL Team 6. It was, and we have this posted. It was reported by Pakistani News, multiple witnesses. They got on the helicopter, it lifted off and blew up. Didn't hit the wall. Okay? So they're going to need... And that's what our military sources told us as well, not just callers like Colonel Six, who's given us very good intel before. So they need to cover up their death. I said, could they have just tagged the names on to a National Guard helicopter and, and, and said they died there? And Colonel Six said, no, he's talked to some of the family people. And Colonel Six called us, he corrected me, uh, he's right, I looked it up. Four months before McChrystal stood down, when there was no news about it, he said he's going to be brought down in a scandal you watch. Colonel Six has now told me who he is, and I've gone and looked it up. He's been involved. Um, he's now, quote, out of the military, but still works for them. We'll just leave it at that. And uh, he's here to give us information on that front, but I also have some other sources saying the same thing. Now, we had another helicopter go down today. NATO helicopter crash lands, and at first they said that it had been shot down. Uh, we're going to be uh, discussing that with Colonel Six as well, but Colonel Six break down exactly what uh, this particular woman uh, who's related to one of the dead seals told you told you uh, the scuttlebutt is and what the seals are saying and why they would want to get rid of them that uh, in the beginning the ones that were killed in Pakistan all of the seals that were aboard that helicopter one helicopter out of three were killed that was roughly a little more than half of that particular group. Now, SEAL Team 6, let me just back up a little bit, is made up of four squadrons, okay? And each uh, squadron has, uh, each team has about three 40-man troops. And you take five-man operational troop uh, guys for, to do a deal. So you got 22 on this one. You got four four uh, operational man um, groups there. What the deal is is that there has been some talk among the wives uh, and other relatives saying we are going to go to the press and tell that we know how this was done and that it was not done the way they said it. There was no Bin Laden being taken. There was no um, him being taken to, to see and being buried, <laughs> and that their loved ones died uh, in a accident or act well not an accident but in a, a way other than what's been reported. What pushed it over the edge was that the other half of that particular squadron mixed in with a few other guys from another squadron to make it look good, the rest of them were killed in this crash that happened the other day. And there's some things I want to point out about this. First of all, they're not going to be in a National Guard helicopter. Those helicopters they use are Navy helicopters or Army helicopters, depending on which, which they have available at that time. They are secured at all times. You know, Batman is not going to take off in, after the Joker without his Batmobile. You know, he's not going to roll out and say, you know, hey, six, let me use your 74 Volkswagen to go chase the Joker. No. So they, they have the specially made uh, helicopters. You remember the reason that the Pakistanians and the Chinese wanted to get a good look at that tail section that was left in Pakistan because it was unusual. So their helicopters are modified for their missions. And um, that, so none of that picks to put together. Uh, well, here's what I'm getting from Bagram Air Base. When special ops has an operation, no one knows. So it would never get reported, and it did within minutes. And that's what the other troops are saying. Uh, if anything went wrong or happened, or if these guys got killed, the news would never know. And they go on to say sometimes it takes years for people to be told that SEALs were killed, and that's been confirmed. They go on to say, and this is from our sources, uh, it, and guys, don't don't show a shot of this yet. I'm not sure if I want to publish this yet. Uh, quote, it hit the news just before 
as bodies were being cleaned up and identified, which again, they don't do. The base goes on blackout to give time to notify families. Uh, and they just go on to say that the whole OBL thing, uh, it was reportedly that they took his body out by Ospreys, which are Marine helicopters. They don't have those in Afghanistan. It's unlikely they have flown those all the way from wherever uh, just for a body. And it goes on. Chinooks rarely travel full of people. They have to hold equipment and packs and gear. So uh, why was it full? The Chinook Special Ops uses Gatling guns on the sides of the Chinooks don't. So no one should have been able to get close enough to RPG it. Uh, and it goes on to say it is possible to hold 36 souls, not 38. Is that true? You can only hold 36, and they're saying 38 were on that helicopter? Well, when you're running anywhere over 30, you're running uh, in dangerous territory because that's true. You're going to have a, a door gunner on, on most of those missions. And plus, let me just back up. When, you, when, uh, when, the first, when this first mission went down in, in, uh, in Pakistan, so when they supposedly got bin Laden, there never should have been a mention of who captured it. Secondly, there surely shouldn't have been a mention of where Obama was going to go to meet them. That's, t that, you know, a sign, put a sign here. This is where you can find special, uh, special forces troops now. You've got, the, I think it was the 101st Airborne out of there and uh, some special forces guys from some ranger groups and so forth because they obviously are not out of the uh, Army base. They've got four groups. they got nine active duty SEAL teams. they got four in Cordoba, California, four, I think, in Norfolk, and they got one that's made up of um, guys that are former SEALs that want to stay active and so forth. So it was so it'd be eight active duty and one reserve, and four on the East Coast. <laughs> that should have never been divulged. And just like uh, the CIA, the only reason that we know that Johnny Mike Stan was the one, the one of the CIA agents that was killed as, when the first man... The point died. is, like Dr. Pachinik says, who's run major operations worldwide, mm -hmm. including killing leaders in major European countries, the minute they come out and tell you a story immediately, you know it's staged because real operations, you'll never hear about it. That's it. You know, like I was telling you yesterday, they say jump, I say run. Okay, they say add, I say subtract because one, you lay in a you lay in a roll for a lie. When he said that they was gonna go down and meet the guys that uh, that had done this, okay, then that told me that the rest of them were in trouble. <laughs> when I got this call the other night, this wait a minute, I think me. you said yesterday was it on air or off air? That you said, watch for more of them to start dying, and I. But but and, and now another helicopter. They tried to shoot down today, but we don't know who was on board. Well, yeah, I don't know. I, I haven't even seen that part. And I, I heard now what I heard on the radio was that it was a hard landing. Yeah. Uh, and I would think that this would this would be following uh, too closely, unless there would they have split the remainder up into two other groups, into two groups rather than another group. But well, let me they, stop you right there. What 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 are the sources? with the SEALs telling you? Uh, because last night you said that they were already getting ready to go public and that's what this uh, killing was about. Right. Well, this, this killing, this, this, this last kill, yeah. They were going to go in public and say that there was no Bin Laden picked up. None of that, other, none of that stuff ever, ever went down. Okay. And they kind of held off on that. When this other killing went down the other day, that was the straw that broke the camel's back. Then you had killed the entire team, everybody's husband, everybody's uncle, everybody's nephew, and damn it, now's the time to come forward because if you don't, they're going to do it again, and uh, we're grieving, our hearts are broken, they're giving us a check instead of our husband, our son, and so forth. It ain't going to go. We cannot let it happen to them so it won't happen to other ones. Well, let me stop you right there. For folks that are doubting this, they murdered five of the members of Jessica Lynch's team because they, they were coming out saying it was all a fable and made up for PR. They murdered Pat Tillman over this stuff. Uh, I mean, people need to understand that this is done routinely if there's a big PSYOP rollout and troops aren't playing along. This is standard procedure. Friends, let me tell you something. I've been in intelligence for the better part of 25 years. This is a rough and tumble game, okay? You, uh, if, I, if, I, if I'm out on a mission and I get killed, nobody knows who I am, okay? I get sent back to the proper family.
funeral home. My wife was told, you know, the people that know what I do know, but it never gets out, you know. And these, these guys are the same way. Uh, there's a guy in Arlington that's from Arlington. Now, his grandmother went ahead and released some information on him, and that's fine, uh, because that was her choice. But you had too many, uh, too many operators on that Chinook. Okay. Well, that's right. They, they, they rarely do that from what I've read. Stay there. Let's, now, let's continue uh, going back to Colonel Six. Colonel Six, the info you, you've given us on, I don't know, four or five subjects has, has turned out to be true. So you do have really good sources. You did tell me your name and who you are. I, I did look it up. Uh, and we appreciate your courage. And can you repeat to me what you said last night, that, you, that, that folks know what you're doing and that people inside the military uh, have actually... Well, I, th I guess I'm already saying it for you. Well, there's not, there's, I mean, it's just not, you know, put up on book boards and on, on, on uh, posters as you walk in the units. But there are individuals that know uh, about my blog. And about, I have a radio show. It's on um, beforeitsnews.com radio. You go to beforeitsnews.com, and the radio show is called Agent in Place. You can click on it. You can listen to past uh Episode and by the way, there there have been people behind the scenes trying to come after you now and trying to trying to. I mean, they are getting upset by what you're doing. But you were telling me that some of the generals and folks are aware of what you're doing, and that uh, not everybody inside the military is happy about what's going on. In fact, you were telling me a lot of people are awake. Oh yeah, a lot of people are awake, and, and I get a lot of where to go. You know, uh, just by passing by somebody. As long as the guy that I report to says. You know, you, you you haven't you haven't taken this overboard. You haven't gone too far, or anything like that. Then I don't have any problems. I don't care what other people think. But because, but now I'm gonna tell you something. Ninety percent of people uh, are supportive of it. They uh, I have uh, this thing called his stats on my uh, on my blog. You know, and that that shows you where uh, people are, are logging on from. And Camp Lejeune, uh, Paris Island, the uh, Air Force Academy. The, so, Let know, me expand on that. What percentage of the military is starting to wake up to the New World Order? Uh, roughly 80%. Because, the, 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 see, this is the whole thing. Everybody knows and uh, that, for instance, they will not tell you, but it is a fact, and you can check it out, that Roughly 75%, now get this, of, the unit, of each unit that's been to or has, or has been to or is in Afghanistan now, roughly somewhere between 50 and 75% of those units' members are hooked on opium. They're hooked on opium, Alex. So when they get back to East Dallas and all they got is heroin, they got opium oil. You hit it with a knife. The milk just comes out. You lick it off the off the, uh, the the off the knife, and boom, you're gone. They're not gonna be able to get that when you get back here. Okay, so they're gonna be breaking the pharmacy, stealing all cartons of oxycontin and all that type of stuff. It's gonna be real problematic. But let me make, make one other point that this very salient in this whole deal. The story is being told now is that they left to go uh, back up a ranger team. Bob, you do not send one special operating group to go with to get another one, okay? If they're in trouble, then you need to send, uh, like, uh, 100, 200 guys, okay, to go and help take care of that situation. Uh, it doesn't make sense. And then what they said is that they, uh, the Rangers... Stay there. We're going to be back in one minute. Six okay. is our guest. And... I don't know how much I can say, but, but he gave me a lot of um, proof of who he is yesterday and some of the things he's been involved in. He probably doesn't want to even get into that on air. Uh, but, 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 but finishing up, you were bringing up the fact that normally there's not this many people together on one helicopter. The fact that it's the biggest one-day loss in the nine-plus-year war, almost 10-year war, uh, coming up on that in uh, October of this year, so three or four months from now. Mm -hmm. uh, all of this uh, you know, really stinks to high heaven. And then you have the Pakistani TV with credible witnesses saying it lifted off, it blew up. We know that a, a helicopter did explode. And, you know, and we know the whole bin Laden raid is a ridiculous fable, buried at sea, fake situation room photos. I mean, that's all come out. But that's really bold of this establishment if they really would wipe out 
the other half of the SEAL team. Uh, but, but, but you're saying you have talked directly to these family members and that they were already talking about going public and that that's why they had to be taken out. That's right. They were, they were talking among themselves, and it had been heard by someone outside of their group, I, I doubt outside of the team, but maybe another team member who was concerned that this information was going to get, that they were going to do something to uh, blow the cover on it. And that person may have said something to someone else. I, I don't know exactly the, how it goes, but they had decided that they were going to hold back and wait for a better time to do it and see, you know, see how if it was going to come out from somewhere else. Because Dr. Roberts hit on it so quick after it happened. And then uh, General Gould came on and, and came right behind him with the exact same thing. <laughs> Another thing you got to look at, Afghanistan has been in, in consultations or negotiations with the Taliban because on four occasions, Karzai has asked the United States to lead. They told, he told them that they were beginning to get become like an occupying force. He told them that uh, when kid, they killed up a bunch of kids, uh, a group of people that had like eight kids in it, that, that he didn't want any more apologies. He said, you know, at one point, NATO, get out. So each time that this is happening, I think what happened is uh, – they came back at him kind of like the Bobby and Johnny, John Kennedy deal. They killed his brother, who was a big-time dope dealer. I mean, you know, so it wouldn't be a great loss to the world. But it would be a great loss to President Karzai. And I'm saying, like, hey, you know, that, that your brother, that could have been you. So, yeah, people are waking up because people understand really what this is. Everybody in, in the Marine Corps is familiar with uh, Smelly Butler. And he's saying that war is a racket, okay? And that makes us, in, in, in essence, racketeers. What you have to understand is, like I said, this is a rough and tumble game. People, there is no reset button, all right? And so you have to take everything as it comes. Okay. When you have, you have them tell you, when they come out and tell you a, a cover story like this, and it has so many holes in it, then you just have to wait for the, for the other shoe to drop. The other shoe has dropped. Now, they're going to get in touch with uh, the gentleman I told you, I don't know if I told you on the air or not, but Mr. Hirsch, okay? Uh, I gave him the number that I have for Mr. Hirsch. I don't know if it's, uh, I haven't tried to call him myself, but uh, apparently they got through to him because she did. I told her she had any problems with giving me a call back, and I'd help her try to uh, follow up on that. This is going to break pretty soon, okay? Because, uh, like I say, you've had, these people have had, uh, and really, you don't even know the numbers because if you got uh, the, the, the numbers don't jive, you know. Colonel you, Six, I'm going to get into the economy, but do two more minutes. What's on the other side? I want to okay. come back because the New Yorker just last week put out a puff piece about the Bin Laden thing. I know Cy Hirsch, Pulitzer Prize winner. I've talked to him before, but he says he'll come on the show and never does. I know he's exposed Abu Ghraib and a lot of big, big events, Operation Phoenix. But, I mean, they are in Obama's hip pocket. I don't know. The families ought to just give a press conference before they start getting whacked. Clearizes that are unknown but have given us good information in the past. At Fort Bragg, Fort Hood, I do not have any sources uh, other than, well, I guess I do have a couple sources with the Navy SEALs, but they're all retired. But these operations are all mixed in together, and no one in the Army, uh, no one in the Marine Corps, uh, no one is is buying the official story that the biggest one-day loss just so happened to be people from SEAL Team 6, um, which was part of the same group that raided the Bin Laden compound. I mean, statistically. Statistically, when the SEALs are such a small part of the overall force of, what, 70-plus thousand, not even counting contractors in Afghanistan, that they would be the biggest one-day loss is very hard to believe and statistically boggles the mind, but that it would be from the same unit. And then you've got the whole Bin Laden story that is just beggars the mind. It is so ridiculous. I mean, the minute I saw that Situation Room photo on that Sunday night, the way they released it to dominate news coverage for the week, and Hillary with her hand over her mouth, I mean, you know when a photo staged. It, it, it looked like they got them all scripted, the men all acting tough. Turned out that was fake. They weren't watching. There wasn't a firefight. 
The helicopter blew up, on and on and on. The media called it flawless execution. Yeah, with the helicopter blowing up, that's real, real flawless. This whole thing is ridiculous. And now, uh, Colonel Six, who told us about McChrystal and uh, Libya before it happened, uh, oh, that's a separate issue, but I want to finish up with the SEALs uh, and the families. Uh, and, they're, and, and, and they're saying they're going to reach out. Uh, let me tell you, they need to do a press conference right now. In fact, I'm even creeped out even, even being somewhere close to this. This is very creepy, kind of like when I warned the D.C. madam a couple months before she got killed. I said, you better go public now. And she said, no. And I said, well, say you're never going to commit suicide. She said, never. And I even talked to her, her condo manager she was good friends with. She said men were following her. She was worried. She was getting documents to her mother. And they killed her, hung her in her mother's shed. Uh, they don't play games. And then we got her handwriting. I was sent her lease. It was not even the, the same handwriting. Uh, and I had Florida detectives and people calling me, and that was creepy and weird. But the whole point here is the detectives that said there were no foul play. You know, I don't need to talk to you guys. It's obvious what team you're on here. Uh, so, so all of this is happening. I mean, this is a dangerous situation, Colonel Six. Uh, are you familiar with Jessica Lynch and how five of the survivors were murdered in a two-week period when they started speaking out, saying she hid in fear, none of this is true, when they were using it as PR to get women to join the military? Yes, sir, I am. Yeah, I, I'm, I'm very familiar with that. Um, and uh, some other situations, like I said, a similar situation was one that came across my desk to uh, do some looking into, which is how I got in behind my crystal, okay? And so then we know what happened on that. But uh, let me just make one other point. Yeah, these people, this, this woman didn't just up and call me either, okay? There was about six fences she had to jump in order to find out, uh, to get me to call her back, okay? And I, wanted, I told her, let me know who you are, blah, 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 so on and so forth. I found that out real quick. And then I said, you know, how can I help you? You know, and I said that uh, I would, you know, advise you. That's what I told him. I, said, I would advise you to get either call a press conference uh, immediately or get in touch with uh, Hersh is the only person I could think of uh, that would look at. I should, uh, or uh, Bill Gertz. I should put it on Gertz, but I don't have his number anymore. But somebody that's going to get this out there that has a lot of credibility and it's going to just say, you know, Hey, this is what happened. I mean, it, you know, what happened is what happened. You can you can dress up the donkey to look like a zebra, but it's gonna be it's gonna uh, still break. And for them to come out and do this type of thing is what is waking up the members of uh, today's military. They're jacking them. They're jacking them around on the way that their pensions are gonna be uh, paid out to them. Like you said, they've taken the the insurance money that they were supposed to have had and given them checks that when they try to cash the checks, they're they're bad checks. And uh, you well, know, it's a contract. When they cash the check, it voids all the money they were going to get. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so you know, all these type of things, and then you got people that say, "Well, we back the troops." Okay, well, if you back the troops. You know, I don't like the war, but I back the truth. You can't do both, friends. It's like they were saying, we're going to establish a no-fly zone. In order to establish a no-fly zone, you must start a war. That's the only way to do it. I mean, you don't just throw a net over Well, that's my next question. What What's the word then, because you, you talked to her and others. I mean, how, how many people are planning to go public? Do we have any idea? And, and, and what are they going to say? You know, investigate the, the, the shoot down of this helicopter? She, uh, I, actually, when I talked with her, there was two other women there, and they gave me the impression there was at least a dozen, okay? And what they're going to do is they're going to come out and they're going to say, basically, that some of them had relatives, uh, and mostly it's husbands, I'm just going to stick it, come out and say that, husbands that were uh, in SEAL six, six, Team 6 that uh, were killed in uh, the operation in Pakistan, and that other members that were in the, the other two helicopters, they know that there was no Ben Laden. So those are the guys that went back and uh, they kind of kept it on the hush hush for a minute. But then, you know, two people can keep a secret if one of them is dead. So they start talking even once a month. Maybe at a basketball game or uh, in the gym or something like this. Anyway. Well, that's my next point uh -huh. is that. 
it was the family that came out on Tillman, and then it did turn out he wasn't fighting Al Qaeda. He was murdered. The the Army's own coroner wouldn't lie, said that he'd been murdered, and then now it all came out that he'd sent letters home and was going to go public. So they they killed him. And it's the same thing with Jessica Lynch. They were going to use her for PR. They told her to lie. She said, okay, I'll do it. And then finally she came out and said, okay, it's all a lie, or they were going to kill her and then say, oh, the poor hero died in a car wreck. Right. But they'd already killed the other folks that were speaking out. Why are they so bold? I mean, if the Pentagon and the people that run this keep getting caught killing people uh, who get in the way of their public relations propaganda, then, I mean, I mean, if they really did kill these SEALs, which it looks like they did, th these people are crazy. Because th if they can't cover up the murder of Pat Tillman, or Jessica Lynch's unit, they're not going to be able to cover this up. No, but it's just like Jimmy Hendrix said, acts as bold as love. You know, when you you get to a certain point where you don't care if it's covered up or not, I tell you what, what you're going to need to do is prove it, okay? Now, how are you going to prove it? And, and I mean, take it into a court and, and have the elements of, of uh, evidence and so forth to actually prove uh, wrongful death or whatever you want to go for. It's going to be damn near impossible. So, 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 so even if they're going to get caught, they don't care because the only thing they couldn't deal with is the credibility of the Navy SEALs themselves going public. Now if their wives want to run around and say they were killed, that'll just be ignored. Kind of like even the Pat Tillman thing. They couldn't have him standing here saying we're growing opium. Uh, even if it came out they killed him, at least Pat Tillman, who has all this credibility, can't do it. Colonel Six, great points. Colonel Six dot com with two X's. We'll continue to check in with you as this develops. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you, sir. All right. Very well. Colonel Six, answer the question. Smart guy right there. <laughs> I tell